News Watch is continuing its coverage of the 2024 West Virginia governor's race. I sat down with Moore Capito to talk about his campaign for governor. We discussed his priorities if elected and his family's history holding office. Take a listen. When voters go into the primary in May, they go into that ballot, they look at your name. What do you want them to most remember you for when they see more capital? I'm the get it done conservative. I'm someone who has gotten it done for West Virginia. I am someone that will continue to get it done for West Virginia. I am a West Virginian for West Virginia. That is my passion. And I have the energy and the experience and the grit to lead this state with a new generation of energy level that we haven't seen. And there's so many great things to come in West Virginia and we'll work nonstop to make sure that that happens. You've had a successful political career working in the House of Delegates and you know, being the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee and the Republican Legislative Committee. What inspired you to run for governor? You know, as a lifelong West Virginian and the father of two children, the future of this state is deeply personal to me. You know, there are not a lot of people from my generation that are still here in West Virginia, but I wanted to stay in West Virginia because I believe that we have a really special moment right now. I'm the get it done conservative in this race. And what really that means is I'm the only one that's taken good ideas and turned them into good public policy. How do you intend to use your experience if, you know, elected governor? Well, what, one of the things that I learned uh, when I very first day I walked into that Capitol is that one of the best things that you can do to move the ball forward is listen. And so we've been spending the past 12 months on the road in West Virginia to the tune, I believe, of 70,000 miles, showing up in every region, in every county in our beautiful state. And we've been running this campaign every single day like the election is tomorrow, and we're not going to stop doing that. And that's exactly what West Virginians will get when I become their governor. A lot of young West Virginians, usually when they enter the workforce, they leave the area looking for more lucrative job opportunities. So do you have any ideas on how to fix that? One of the biggest things that we have to do in West Virginia is address our education system. We know that it's failing our kids. And one of the most obvious things that has come to the surface is that college isn't for everybody. And we know that we have the opportunity to build a workforce in the state of West Virginia to support a 21st century economy. And what do I mean by that? That means expanding our vocational opportunities in West Virginia, because at the end of the day, from my perspective, if we build the talent here and train the talent here, we'll keep our kids here. And once we keep our people and build that talent base, I believe that business will grow and opportunities will follow. As a West Virginian and, um, you know, as somebody who's already worked in politics here, what are the key issues that you've seen West Virginia face and what ideas do you have to fix those? We can't talk about broadband and connectivity enough. I've spent the day today in southern West Virginia and one of the pieces that we've learned from a lot of entrepreneurs that we've talked to is they want to build their business here, but they have to have the tools available to be able to grow it. And one of those critical tools is broadband. So we need to grow our broadband in West Virginia. We need to increase uh, our, our water and sewer assets throughout the region to ensure that we can not only support what we have now. Everywhere I've gone, I've talked about the opportunity that West Virginia has to claim the banner of having the safest communities in the country. And when we do that together, putting safe communities first, enhancing our educational opportunities, bringing energy independence back to this country, leading the way right here in West Virginia, we will create a 21st century hub for opportunity right here in West Virginia. Speaking of family, I also spoke with Chris Miller in our last candidate series, and I know that it's been a talking point about you all you know, your families, and you come from a political legacy. Yours goes back even farther than his. Um, do you feel that that has impacted your uh, your career as a politician, and do you think that it will hurt or help your campaign as governor? Well, I think you're probably referring to, to my mom and then my grandfather before that. You know, I love my mother. Um, I'm proud to be her son, but I'm my own man. 
and I've spent uh, my time in the legislature building a record and getting things done that have moved the ball forward in the state of West Virginia. I think it's critically important to have a governor that has good relationships, not only in state government, but at the federal government as well. It's going to take a collective effort to grow West Virginia, but that means collaboration and communication. All we know in life is that relationships get us where we need to. And I have worked my entire career to build the right relationships and strong relationships by listening to move the ball forward, and I'm confident we'll continue to do that.